Hey guys, welcome back. My name is GK. So in this video, we're going to create our first VM in Google Compute Engine and connect to that VM from our desktop. All right, guys. So before we get started, I'm assuming that you all have GCP console access, uh, which means that you have uh, subscribed for $300 credit. And once you log into the GCP console, we should navigate to the Compute Engine section. So Compute Engine is a, a service that offers us to create VMs like EC2 in AWS. When you navigate to that compute engine section, you will see, you know, no instances present here. Uh, in my case, I haven't created any prior instances. So we're going to create our first VM instance here. Click on create. You can give any name here. I'm just leaving it default as it is right now. And the region is where your instance will be located. So compute is always regional and zonal specific. So when you select this region, you know, the VM is going to be created in that region, in that zone, uh, specifically to that data center. So for example, if I select the default region, which is US Central 1, and zone is US Central 1A. So there are data centers that are located in this zone. So there are different zones in each region. And our VM is going to be created in US Central 1A zone. And the good thing about this is it also gives you the monthly estimate of this instance. If I create as it is by default with all the current settings without changing much, you know, it's going to be costing me around $25.67 per month. The family machine is general purpose. I'm going to leave all these settings by default. And you can change here and click on your preferable VM image for instance if you are more comfortable with centos or red hat or you know if you want to go with even windows you can change the image and you can um, select that but for now i'm just leaving it as default and the boot disk type is standard persistent disk um, i'm just leaving it as default for 10 gb but you can also increase more or uh, you can add more disks later too if you want so the important section that you all have to note down here is the service account so whenever you create a VM, each VM has a default service account. So for instance, when I'm going to create this VM, and this is the service account that's going to be present in, in that VM. So this defines what kind of access your VM is going to have. And if you see here in this access scope section, allow default access. And when I click on this here, or when you hover on this, you will see the default is read only access to storage and service management, write access to stack driver logging and monitoring, read write access to service control. So basically, which means that this compute engine VM that we're going to create will have read only access to the storage. Um, storage is like the S3 uh, equivalent in AWS. So uh, the storage bucket so this VM is going to have only read-only access to the storage bucket. And by default, it only has access to write access. It only it has write access to the stack driver logging. So I think it's by design because, you know, whenever you create a VM, you want to log uh, all the stuff that's happening in a VM in the monitoring tool. In GCP, the monitoring tool is stack driver. So this VM can log all its stuff into the stack driver logging. So this is the default. But you can change it by selecting this where it's going to give complete access to all cloud APIs, which means that this VM is going to um, have full access to any GCP service. Or you can also specifically define, uh, you know, um, what kind of accesses you want to, you want to have for this VM. Um, I'm just leaving it default because that should be enough for this demo and we can work around uh, in the future demos by giving different accesses. Now the firewall is important too because you know whenever you create a VM this is going to define uh, let's say that you want to have a web server in this VM and and this these options will define whether you know the traffic incoming to your VM has HTTP allowed or or disallowed for uh, for example if I have to install a web server you know you have to allow HTTP traffic else nobody can access your web server from outside or if you have an SSL certificate, you would allow HTTPS traffic. So by default, all the firewall settings have SSH allow 
uh, to all, which means that, you know, whenever I create this VM, I should be able to SSH from anywhere. So that's the default setting, which I don't have to give it here. And there are other options too. Like for example, you can give the description, you can give more labels. Labels are uh, like tags in AWS. And you can also make this instance as a preemptable instance, which is equivalent to spot instance in AWS. We'll, we'll be discussing about this, uh, you know, in future videos. But you can also specify the metadata and the startup script is like user data section in AWS where you can, uh, you can have a startup script. For instance, if I want to specifically install an application when, when my system boots up, I can put that script here. Okay. Now the other good feature of a GCP, which is not present in AWS is you can also execute, I mean, whatever we're trying to define here from console, you can also execute that either using a rest client and they have given the complete, you know, uh, the body of the rest and, and uh, the URL where you want to post this. So for example, if you have a rest client in your browser, you can just copy this and then you can, you can paste and you should be able to make the call and create a VM. Or you can also code it in your favorite language. So that is one good option. The other thing is, like I've said before, you know, whatever you're trying to do from console, you also you can also do the same from G Cloud shell. And they also have G Cloud equivalent command that we have put in the console right now. For example, you know, the project is this one and instance zones, you know, machine type, so everything is properly defined and the scopes that we've discussed and service account, the default service account that is set. So you can copy all this gcloud command and then you can go to the gcloud shell and paste it there. So that's one way of uh, creating a VM. You don't have to necessarily do it from the console itself. So these two are very good features uh, in GCP. So I click on create. It's going to take a while. So before uh, it gets created, so what we can do is we can install git bash or whatever equivalent. So I have installed Linux um, on my Windows 10. So I'm using an Ubuntu flavor. So I'm going to connect to the uh, VM that, that we have created right now. So to, to connect to that VM, the first thing what we have to do is we have to generate our SSH keys. Uh, which I've already done. If you are not aware of that, it is a very simple command SSH hyphen key gen. So this is going to generate um, a key in this specific location. Now I'm going to skip this by doing control C um, because I have already done that. So once you run this command, it's going to create two keys. One is private key and the public key. So you would want to copy your public key and go to the metadata section. So when you scroll down um, in the compute engine left hand section, you will see something called metadata. And in the metadata, go to SSH key section. Now it is uh, sometimes tough to find this because you know, it is sort of a hidden tab in metadata section, but you know, uh, I've struggled initially, but right now you can see there's a section here, SSH keys and edit and you have to add uh, the key here and there are other ways as well which i'm going to discuss in future videos but this is an easiest way where you can put your public key of uh, your windows or if you're using putty you have to generate using that putty gen or whatever equivalent tool and then put the public key and copy it and paste it here so once you have done that now we can go back to our instances by clicking on vm instances select instance one, which I've created right now. And we need to get the IP address. And this is the external IP address. So you will have internal IP address, which you can communicate internally inside GCP network. And this is external IP address where uh, this is available from internet. Clear and All right, so I gave the IP address and I'm able to connect now to my instance. So I'm inside 
instance one, uh, which is uh, the instance that we have created, and I can do sudo su So now you can see I have connected my instance from Windows desktop. All right guys, so this is our first video, our first Compute Engine demo where I have created a VM instance. I hope this is helpful for you guys and then, you know, try to do this at home. And if you're able to connect, it's all good. If you have any issues, please feel free to comment in the comment section. With that, thank you so much for watching and please do click on like button if you like this video. Thanks.